Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. In this video, we will be testing Malwarebytes Premium against some of the most infamous ransomware from the last five years. All of these samples will be executed on this test system. We're going to see if Malwarebytes can protect us and more importantly, if it can protect our files. So we have some sample data in the documents folder. As you can see, this is the last copy of all of Shakespeare's great works. So I think students around the world will be mighty disappointed if they get encrypted today. But we'll find out. Of course, there's a lot of stuff to test in the folder, so we're just going to automate the process using one of our tools, Malix, which is going to individually launch these as sub-process and we'll see how Malwarebytes reacts to that. So here it goes, Geronimo. As expected, threats are being blocked. So far we have a proactive detection of 100%, but keep in mind these are known threats, so I would expect most of them to be within the signatures. But we're going to see at the end if there's any damage to our files whatsoever, if anything gets encrypted, and whether any threats are missed. It does seem like we have a threat that was not proactively blocked, was allowed to execute, and that is OP Article 13. That was kind of a renegade ransomware sample, so it's interesting. We are, of course, going to test afterwards if it is blocked by some of the uh, secondary defense components like the exploit protection or the ransomware protection and whether or not our files are actually affected because that's what matters. The test is now complete and we have a proactive detection of 98.53% with just one miss and that was the OP Article 13 ransomware sample. If we take a look at our files, everything seems to be safe. Nothing has been encrypted. If we open the plays of Shakespeare, whether to students' disappointment or delight, we still have all the plays. We're still getting alerts from Malwarebytes. Now, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the uh, sample of OP Article 13 and we're going to execute it on this system because I want to monitor individually what happens when we execute it, what component blocked it in the end. So if restored to snapshot, we're back on a clean version of the system, just so that we don't have all of those alerts flooding up our attention. We can just run OP Article 13, the one sample that was supposedly missed during the test, but didn't do any damage. And we can see what exactly happened here. So if we go ahead and run this, it does seem to execute for a while, but then we get malware blocked, machine learning slash animalis detection. So this was actually still blocked by the real time protection. It's just not a set signature, it's a machine learning detection. Perhaps that's why our test script considered it a miss because the process was allowed to load in memory, but it does seem like it is blocked directly after execution. So very early in the attack chain. Now, we also wanted to explore the capabilities of each of the modules of this product further. So we wanted to test a situation where the malware protection module, for whatever reason, be it signatures, heuristics, failed to detect a certain sample. What would happen in that case? Would the ransomware protection or exploit protection buy us a safe passage or would the data be successfully encrypted? So in order to test that, we have two samples here, and I think they're fairly representative of what we've encountered, which is varying results. To demonstrate that, we're going to execute both of them with the malware protection turned off. What we're trying to do here is test for those zero-day type scenarios where maybe the malware protection module is not relevant. If it's a brand new threat, it's not in the signatures, it's completely obfuscated, it could get around that module. So first, we're gonna try Phobos. Gonna execute it and it is going to run because once again, no signature stopping it. It's not being scanned. It is allowed to run. And the first thing it does is turns off Windows Firewall. It is shortly going to begin its encryption process and start targeting our files. Then we're gonna see a desktop background change and some readme files being placed for the ransom note. That is of course, unless Malwarebytes is able to stop it. We have this notification, files are waiting to be burned to disk. If we click on it, there are no files though. There should be a readme here, but perhaps it was stopped. If we check our documents, everything seems fine. 
And now we have a notification. It says ransomware blocked. Ransomware detected and quarantined by real-time protection, even though we have malware protection turned off. So I suspect this is the ransomware protection module specifically identifying the encryption behavior and stopping it while it was happening. If we take a look at our documents, you'll see that some of them have actually been encrypted, but Malwarebytes observed this behavior and stopped it from happening across the board. So we only have a few files that have been affected, I believe, and most of our data is still perfectly fine and accessible. So that is a big win for the ransomware protection module. But now we're gonna try Ryuk and we'll see if we are as fortunate. Oh, <laughs> well, it looks like Ryuk itself was not fortunate enough to be saved from the encryption event. So I'm going to get a fresh sample. That's pretty interesting. Ransomware killing ransomware. But no worries there. We can replace it easily. Now we're going to try Ryuk. And this, interestingly, is able to shut down malware bytes immediately if it's not blocked by signatures, of course. Just to clarify, with malware protection turned on, it is blocked. But without it, it is able to terminate Malwarebytes itself. And that is likely how it's able to bypass the ransomware protection component and the other stuff that it has. And in a few moments, all of our files are indeed encrypted and we have a readme on the desktop. So Ryuk does successfully encrypt the data, demonstrating that Yes, Malwarebytes does have ransomware protection that can work independently of the malware protection module. It might save you in certain cases, but it's not perfect by any means or good enough to block every kind of attack. Needless to say, you should never turn off your malware protection. Now, Malwarebytes does have a defense for this though, and it's called tamper protection. It's not turned on by default though, so you have to go in here and do it. And we're gonna do that. So we're gonna prevent anyone from shutting down Malwarebytes accessing the scanner, uninstalling. You know what? We're just gonna block everything. Go ahead and do that. And now I do wanna see if Ryuk is blocked by the ransomware protection module if it does not successfully disable malware bytes. And unfortunately, even with tamper protection turned on, Ryuk has no problem shutting down malware bytes and beginning its encryption process. That is very interesting, just something I came across. But keep in mind, this is a rare find and only happens with this specific sample. Now, I should also mention that all of the sample-based tests that you saw were conducted by moving the samples onto a system location. For some reason, Malwarebytes does not scan the network locations, at least not with the home version. It may have something to do with performance, but it is an issue if you're using network folders like I am. The real-time protection just does not scan those. Now that's out of the way, for the final test, we're going to conduct a behavioral simulation of a ransomware attack using our own custom script. For this, we're also going to change one setting within real-time protection. We are going to turn on the block pen testing attacks because I think it is relevant to this test. Gonna hit apply, and now we can begin with our test. So we're going to say python malix.py ransomware. And what this is going to do is execute different modules that we have set up that emulate ransomware behavior. So we're gonna try some indirect command execution to get into the system, try to set up a DNS C2, and then grant access to all of our files. So that way you can bypass access control and start encrypting the data. Then we're going to try to delete the shadow copies Finally, there's fall encryption, and then we're done. Now, as you can see, Malwarebytes blocked this attack pretty early. So we had the very first stage, the indirect command execution being blocked. We also had the second, third, and fourth stages being blocked. But interestingly, it did not block the deletion of shadow copies or the encryption of files. So it seems to be much more effective at blocking the method of execution as opposed to the final encryption behavior. The overall block rate based on our weights is 53.85%, which is pretty decent given we are testing the behavioral protection. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any ideas for testing, let us know. Also, we have a lot more tests coming up just like this, as well as a comparison. So don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel, like and share the video if you enjoyed it. 
And if you're a business and you'd like to do some in-depth audits and testing to see how your configuration holds up, feel free to contact us at tbsc.tech. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.